The question is that this bill be narrowed a second time. I call the honourable member for Ford. Oh, thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. It's a pleasure to rise in this House today to back the coalition government's plan for a fairer and more sustainable way of distributing GST for all Australians through the bill before us, the Treasury Laws Amendment, making sure every state and territory gets their fair share of the GST bill. Well, that's some mouthful. But as a Deputy Speaker, I think this is a tremendous piece of legislation and I want to commend uh, the Treasurer for his willingness to listen to the concerns of, of various colleagues. And I know I had discussions with the Treasurer to ensure that Queensland was getting its fair share as well. And that's the important thing about this government, Mr Deputy Speaker, is that we are bringing a piece of legislation to this House today, again, that will see every state benefit, including Queensland and my electorate of Ford. And this bill, Mr Deputy Speaker, seeks to provide a new solution to the equal distribution of GST across the country. It is a plan that is designed to leave all states and territories better off while guaranteeing that no state's share of GST will fall below 70 cents in the dollar from 2022-23 and 75 cents from the years 2024-2025. The way GST is distributed in Australia has not been updated since it was introduced in 2000 by then Prime Minister John Howard and Treasurer Peter Costello. And since then the revenue has more than doubled. But not only that, or not only that, but it is also expected to grow another 65 per cent over the next decade. With the conditions introduced in 2000, it's important to reflect, I think, in the changed environment that they're no longer conducive to the environment we operate in and leaving the system flawed and, as we all recognise, in need of reform. The Productivity Commission found that although the current GST distribution system functions well and achieves higher levels of fiscal equity, it can deliver perverse outcomes when there is a significant shock to the Australian economy, such as a mining boom. And whilst being from Queensland, I readily acknowledge the shortcomings of the system that have resulted in WA only receiving 30 cents in the dollar. This bill is designed to avoid that, where we have seen that reduction of West Australian share to that record low of 30 cents in the dollar. This compares to Victoria and New South Wales, who saw more than 90 cents in the dollar, with smaller states seeing even higher rates again. The current system of horizontal fiscal equalisation does not account for those unprecedented shocks or changes. The mining boom exposed vulnerabilities in the system that could not have been anticipated when the GST was introduced. But importantly, Mr Deputy Speaker, once again, it is this government that shows that it seeks to learn from those experiences and make relevant improvements to the system rather than waiting around to see what those opposite would do and see the same errors repeated again. This bill will create a new standard for the GST distribution system to ensure the fiscal capacities of all states and territories are at least the equal of New South Wales or Victoria. The government's interim response was released on 5 July this year and the pro proposed reforms to the way GST was allocated and would leave the states and territories better off and protect the integrity of the system. In essence, the state should have sufficient resources, that is the fiscal capacity, so that all Australians have equal access to vital government services, no matter where they live across the country. And importantly, Mr Deputy Speaker, this can be seen in conjunction with a number of other measures that we are undertaking. The government's plan will first create a new equalisation benchmark against New South Wales or Victoria, whichever is higher, and all states will transition to this new equalisation standard over six years from 2021-22 20, to 2026-27. Secondly, it will introduce a permanent in-system relativity flaw of 70 cents from 2022-23, increasing to 75 cents 
in the dollar from 2024-25. Thirdly, this bill will see a permanent boost to the GST distribution pool of funds available for all states and territories, providing direct Commonwealth cash injections in addition to GST collections each year from 2021-22 onwards. This bill will enable an initial boost of some $600 million in 2021-22 and a further $250 million boost in 2024-25, indexed each year to grow in line with GST. As part of the fourth stage during the transition period from 21-22 to 26-27, the states and territories will be guaranteed the better of the old system or the new system. This means that at the end of the transition period, each state and territory will have received the better of the cumulative total over the entire period of either the old system or the updated system. Payments will be verified annually by the Commonwealth Grants Commission over the transition period and any adjustments will be made accordingly. The fifth stage to be completed by December 2026 will see the Productivity Commission conduct an inquiry to assess whether the updated system is working efficiently, effectively and operating as intended. Lastly, we'll separately see a short-term short top-ups to Western Australia and the Northern Territory to keep their relativities above $0.70 cents and $4.66 respectively from 2019-20 to 21-22. At the end of this period of 26-27, Australia will have a horizontal fiscal equalisation system that seeks to protect against the economic shocks and provides a more stable source of revenue for all states and territories. But importantly, in my state of Queensland, Mr Deputy Speaker, over the six years from 2021-22 to 2026-27, Queensland will benefit from a $518 million boost in untied funding. This will see funding across the state, but importantly in my community, additional funding available for schools, hospitals, roads and other essential su social support services. And importantly, Mr Deputy Speaker, this is on top of the already record funding we are providing to schools and hospitals across Queensland, as well as infrastructure. The horizontal fiscal equalisation fair go principle changes the way the GST is allocated among the states and territories to benefit all Australians. The government's horizontal fiscal equalisation reforms implemented in this bill continue to uphold this principle so that all Australians are on an equal footing no matter where they reside. This bill will see the Commonwealth injecting an additional $9 billion into the system over the 10 years to 2028-29 to make every jurisdiction better off. But the states will also benefit over, that, over a shorter period in the fact that they will receive additional funds over the next four years as a result of decisions in this government's 2015-16 budget from applying GST to online purchase, purchases and other compliance matters. Importantly, the additional funding from the Commonwealth will not come at the expense of existing payments to the states and will be provided in perpetuity. The Commonwealth's projections use the Productivity Commission's estimates based on numbers the states have provided. Mr Deputy Speaker, the government has consulted extensively with all the states on its proposal since the release of its interim response. But unlike changes to the rate and base of the GST, changes to the distribution of GST revenue do not require approval of the states. But to provide certainty to the Australian people, the Commonwealth is now seeking to legislate these reforms by amending the Commonwealth Grants Commissions Act and the Federal Financial Act. In the end, GST provides an important source of revenue to all states and territories, and we have built a system that operates in a changing economy. Once again, Mr Deputy Speaker, this is a demonstration that this coalition government is focused on delivering responsible, forward-thinking economic management for the country, and in particular in this case with the GST. There's only a coalition government just delivering strong economic growth record jobs growth and a stronger economy. And only a coalition government that will and can deliver 
the real benefits for Australians right across this great country. I'm pleased, Mr Deputy Speaker, to be speaking in support of this bill and commend this bill given that it's a responsible GST plan that will benefit all states and therefore all Australians, and I commend this bill to the House. I thank the honourable member.